construction of the DC-3 crash site. It's an adventure you come with me, eh hey, bud? <laughs> we found it. It hasn't been easy. Planes come through here. Uh, the turbulence forcing the aeroplane down. They wouldn't have stood a chance trying to pull up. You see a track oh, anywhere, Graham? I'm pretty worried. Thanks, Graham. Beautiful. End of the day, had a good feed, had a good walk, gonna have a good sleep. How, how good is this hut though? It's pretty impressive, eh? Yeah. I really not like dock, it. It's not a dock maintained hut, but it's pretty messy coming in though. It's pretty impressive. Anyway, it's time to go to bed. Good morning off with a with a Jed's coffee. You had your sleep, bro? Fairly well. Yeah? Well, yeah, fairly well. Well, let's get breakfast down and go and have a look at this plane. We're going to head back half an hour to the DC-3 junction, then we're going to drop down and try to find it. We're not going to spend too much time there because um, we're conscious of our daylight hours and then we're going to come back here grab our packs and then we're going to carry on the old north-south track. Now look, something that a lot of people do wrong if you go day hiking or you go and do a side track like this, you leave your packs in a hut like this but you don't take the right gear. I knew we were coming on a, a day trip and um, side trip so I bring a day pack with me, very compactable. It's important to take some food just in case you're stuck in there overnight. Um, for me, I need um, a battery backup for the cell phone um, if we need to uh, recharge my phone. Of course, always take a head torch. Even on a side trap in the middle of the day, take a hood, head torch. You never know. Of course, your safety device these days is always your cell phone. Um, I always take my e with me. Um, we have our map. I have my compass. We have our first aid kit and the GPS and of course a full bottle of water. What you need to be taking with you if you're just going off on a side trip. We'll uh, catch you hopefully at the, the crash site. Chopper pad's just up here oh, yeah. and I guess that would double up as a, a tent site so yeah. you turned up here and the hut was full, you have an option of staying here, then you have the toilet there, and just a little bit of views. Looks like we've got a really good day, yeah. good day for this. How amazing is that? Yeah, look at that cloud of vision over in Haraki Plains. Alright, let's keep bashing down. Onward and downward. come back to the junction of the DC-3 crash site and so it's been 30 minutes coming back um, we're not going to take too long two hours absolute max so at the moment it's 8 30 yeah so this is all a bit of an unknown apparently it's a little bit gnarly in here let's see what we find goblin forest man it's awesome, isn't it? It's pretty cool. We can see a hobbit any minute. Yeah. Well, there he is. <laughs> How awesome is this? Quite a mysterious path. Mysterious goblin forest. So, Graham and I um, are up on this. I won't even try to pronounce the name of this mountain. But we're at 849. It does sort of indicate that there's supposed to be a trig here. A395, but um, 
can't find it. So we've missed the turn off to the crash site and I think I know where it was. There was no markers on it so possibly that's intentional. We'll uh, backtrack now and go down that. Have a little skirt around here for the trig though and uh, we'll catch you shortly. But how awesome is this forest? It's a pretty unreal day. 849 meters. Yes! We found it! Wow, it was worth the walk. Yeah. So we're bang on the trick point A395. <laughs> we're at an elevation of 849 meters. And we have found the summit. How awesome is that? 60 degree view, eh? Yeah, pretty impressive. Um, we're going to be actually walking along that Tihanga ridge line, which is the old north south track. That's the plan. <laughs> oh, it's always an adventure. <laughs> always an adventure always when you come with me, eh, bud? <laughs> the plan may not be as it ends up, but mate, this is a real man's adventure, I'd say. Is that sexist? <laughs> None of this in the car park next to the blooming car on the main highway, pretending you're a tramper. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real, real McCoy. Yeah. This is about compasses and yeah. house and endurance. Yeah, so if you're looking for a real hiking, tramping, adventure <laughs> YouTube channel, go to Outdoorsman Dave. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real deal. Excellent. Mm. Lead on. Downwards. There you go. All right. I found a, uh, a rock can. So the marker was way up there, there's nothing else down, but there's this rock car in here. Oh, hang on. We got a blue tag, so we're still going down the squeeze slope, man. It's not for the faint hearted. found a pink marker, struggled to find the next one, but you drop down into this little riverbed. So we think this is possibly where the rope is supposed to be, over this waterfall, very close to the crash site, but um, unless we skirt around this, this thing might have had us beat. We found it. It hasn't been easy. Graham and I have sidled down the side of this um, river and this is the first sign of the wreckage. I feel quite emotional really. Must have been a rope that came down this waterfall at some stage, but someone's taken that away. And so we've come down down the side. Oh Lord, the souls of these 23 people that perished. Ironically, quite a peaceful place to rest. The crash is in this valley just down in here. The planes come through here, complete blind, thinking that it was on the eastern side and it just could not get over the top of this cliff. According to the reports it was a combination of bad weather, uh, the turbulence forcing the aeroplane down, they couldn't uh, lift it up enough. But um, also there's evidence that 
the, the pilots who were just on the wrong side of the climbers of this and uh, when they started descending instead of descending down into the bay they actually descended down into this so the part that got a little confusing is you come down the scree and you think that you might continue down possibly you could but um, off to the right hand side you see this tree here there's a marker over there and head towards that big tree and drop straight down so the crash site is down on this ravine I'd love to know the actual impact site I suspect it's this bluff here it wouldn't have stood a chance trying to pull up and come over the top of that complete line turbulent down it was all over Apparently they changed this track around because it was too muddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing that's the way across the Tahunga ridge line. We're going to have a bit of a powwow in terms of Our whether or not we go out Thornsman Dave Adventure Way or we go Wussy Graham's way. Wussy to Graham's Wifey. way to Wifey. This is where Graham prefers there's three people because then it's two against one. Yeah, this is going to be a challenge for young Graham. Yeah, so we're, just gonna, Graham. we're just going to have a spot of lunch and then uh, between you, you and me, we're going to head up that way. Wait and see. So this hut here, uh, Kari Tatahi, this is one of what they call the Forgotten Five. So this is the second one that we've come across on this adventure. They were all built by the New Zealand Forestry Service in 1970s. And uh, both this one and the one that we were at um, Motupiri uh, yesterday um, have now been taken over by the Thames Valley uh, Deer Stalking Association. Great finding that site today. It was a bit of a mission. We had to sort of scramble through a bit of bush. Yeah. But wasn't it awesome we found it? Yeah. Yeah, just very poignant sort of time there really. Yeah. Think of what happened. Yeah, you, we could have spent quite a bit of time just just taking in the... Just the dr drama of the, what we Yeah, of what actually happened. I don't know if you can see it on video, but Fakati Island or White Island has uh, got a big plume of smoke above it. Maybe it's active again. Um, and then of course directly in front of us is uh, the mount. Only the fourth time in the weekend. <laughs> you can never do it enough. <sighs> this is like groundhog die. Only the, only How many the times have we done this today? Four times. <laughs> four times in two days. Will we ever get out of here? Do not camp here because chances are you're camping on a bog in actual fact if you have a look at this it's not too bad but it's just all moss so this literally is a, a, a bog or swampy area and trees don't grow in swampy areas so looks lovely so I'm kind of guessing in the old forestry days this was possibly a campsite there might have even been a timber mill or something here currently on the north-south track we're heading north now and we're just coming out into the clearing of Thompson's track so this is where we've decided to go out of so yeah if you see that sign there it's directly opposite through there so we carry on down effectively a four-wheel drive track and uh, then drop down to the road where we hope to be picked up. What a mess.
this is like follow the yellow clay road. Seen any markers yet, though? <laughs> No, can you see a track oh, anywhere, Graham? I'm pretty worried. Pretty, pretty worried. Pretty dense bush. Sure. Could be lost. We better get the GPS out. <laughs> Make sure we get my camera, please. Uh, if you head up that way, you go to Motapiri, and you can see the other marker there, and that's heading south, and that uh, goes up to Karitatahi, where we've just come from. However, we're going down because uh, we're running out of light, so I can only imagine we carry on down this track. So with a complex adventure like this, um, there's a lot of intel that needs to be gathered. And so the Kaimai Hut uh, community were incredibly helpful. Um, I do have a microphone malfunction and I just want to shout out a few names that were missed before the microphone comes back on. So that was Lorette Stroud and Lisa Brownless for your information on the Puki Tutu Hut and Andrew Murdoch and Russell Weathan for your information on the Kalani track. Hopefully my mic will kick in about now. Tony Watson for information on possibly where to find the DC3. Uh, Darren Tunnicliffe about the Tahunui track. Um, Logan Davey who talked about the Kiri Tahi Kari Tahi Tahi track conditions. Jason Sheetman, um, he was giving me some advice on the Eliza mine but uh, we didn't end up going there. Logan Davey, uh, once again um, he was giving me some information on the Kari Tahi Tahi um, track um, and what the condition of that track was like. And uh, Benjamin Ross, um, who gave us the alternative track um, up Kalani Lakes. And of course, uh, we owe a huge thank you to Diane Stockman, who, um, who graciously dropped us off at the start of the Kalani uh, track, and who is graciously going to come and pick us poor boys up again. Yay, so. Diane, yay. <laughs> Good Diane, we love her. So um, we're going to go off to the memorial at Gorton very shortly. And so just a bit as a roundup, Graham, what did you think of the track? What you, what was your highlight? It was a real mixture. We've gone through forestry, we've gone through swamps four times. Yeah. <laughs> four we've times. gone through some lovely scenery. We've done a, mount, a peak, yeah. with beautiful scenery, and of yeah. course, finding the uh, the remains of the aircraft was just was yeah. pretty amazing. And we had that we had to find it. But yeah, that was pretty yeah. special. And our night in the, ki in the in the little hut was Curry, awesome. It was lovely. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we had some good times. Yeah, so we did. So um, I've been meaning to find that DC site for a number of years, so I've ticked that bucket list off. And sadly, we didn't get through to the Puki Tutu hut. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm going to have to come and uh, do that one again. So. Another reason to come to the mountains. Yeah. My big target uh, for the next few months is to get to a thousand and hopefully I can beat this YouTube algorithm and so that YouTube start presenting some of my videos. This is not our lift. Yeah so if you haven't already done so Graham and I are the real McCoy when it comes to <laughs> tramping and adventures. Please click that like button hit that subscribe button and that notification and you can be sure to get another one of these amazing experiences yep. with Outdoorsman Dave. Well oh, thanks Graham for another wonderful adventure. Yeah another great, great couple of days. So all good. Cheers.